I told the guys last year, we didn't come in day one talking about playing for a state championship. We talked about getting better on day one, and that sounds cliche, but that, that's what it is. And that, our guys have done a great job all camp, you know, in the summer of getting better. We went and went against Quincy High in Williamsville. We wanted to throw our guys to the fire. You know, we don't need to come out here and hoot and holler and do all this stuff. They know what their job is. We're going to get better each day, and, and uh, hopefully with the depth that we have, we'll have a chance to make a good run. Trophy to the Central Panthers who finished the season. They are West Central Illinois' best known and most dependable football commodity, a reputation both hard and well earned for Camp Point Central. But last November's title game loss to Lino Winslow means the window for growth is far from closed. Give them credit because they, they were pretty unblockable and, and they did a nice job of staying on us. It really showed us how we just need to dig deeper, focus on more technique and just, I mean, work out all the bugs in our defense and offense overall. Big one last year. We don't want anything less than that. You know, we, we're not so, we're not, I guess, uh, satisfied with an exit, and we want to ultimately bring a state title to Camp Point. In chasing that final and arguably most difficult evolution into a titleist this season, the Panthers will accentuate strengths both established. Uh, the chemistry still, it's really strong. It's there. I'm expecting a lot of parties after games still, and hanging out uh, off the field. And so, yeah, just like the friendships and uh, chemistry that we have is what I'm most excited for. And new. Their list of enviable assets reading in many ways very different from this time last year. For starters, this will be the fastest 11-man offensive starting group coordinator Casey Ray has ever employed, largely now because of the construct of the guys up front. Oh, for sure. It'll be a different offensive line. I mean, we usually have that 250, 300 pound, a few of those guys, and we just don't have them this year with, with Owen leaving and, and Cole graduating. Um, but we're excited about the athleticism we have there, and, and, you, and you have that with the speed we have in the backfield. It should be fun. It just means that we can run to the outside instead of just giving it to our fullbacks. Like last year, we had two good, two really good fullbacks, and now this year we can mix it up and maybe run to the outside a little bit more. The best part is that a lot of times with a smaller school, we don't have as bigger kids. But, I mean, we can wear the bigger ones out. So by even the first, I mean, after the second half, I mean, they're drained, and we can just take advantage and keep on running on them, running sweeps and stuff like that. And Reese and Caden, uh, Darren Rigg anchored our, our 4 by one 4 by 2 relay. He's going to play tackle. He's up to about 180 pounds. So just the speed at which those guys can get out front and we can do different things. This will also be the strongest starting point for quarterback play in school history. Yes, of course, because of the return of Nick Moore, but also that of the man who replaced him when Nick was hurt. You go back to two years ago, uh, Nick's first ever game starting at QB was against Carrollton, who ended up getting second in that game where we came back in the fourth quarter. And to have him last year, and obviously he got dinged up a little bit, and, and uh, Gavin stepped in. I want to use Gavin a little bit more at tight end this year and split out and some of that stuff. But yeah, to have two senior quarterbacks that have literally been varsity quarterbacks since their sophomore year is huge. There is no one Ike Gennenbacher type workhorse in play here either. But that's an all-state loss Brad Dixon says his team will attack by committee. I uh, really like our depth. Um, I don't know if we'll have that one guy that, that gets 1,000 yards this year, but I think uh, you know, offensively we might give the ball to nine different guys on any given night. The defensive construct is where things get both weird and fun. For example, on paper here, this might be the best secondary Central has ever employed. Not exactly something we talk about in the run-happy WIBC. We've got guys that play a lot. Like Drew came in, played most of the season last year, had a bunch of tackles. Nick's played since I was a sophomore. I played since I was a sophomore. So just a lot of uh, time in the defensive backfield. So When our secondary is good, you know, plays, plays are, are 10 yard gains and 15. We don't see a lot of those 30 yard, 40 yard gains against us because our, our DBs can tackle. They're in the right spot. The Panthers' defensive line, however, took a big graduation hit. And again, Eichenbach's graduation does leave a hole at linebacker. But last year's underclassmen breakout stars, particularly Elijah Genenbacher, Darren Rigg, and Cade Niekamp, are dazzlingly fun to project. We have so many options for defense and so many great players. I mean, we have older ones that are coming back and even younger ones I'm very excited, some sophomores um, that are coming back that I'm very excited to see. How they do. You know, seven guys back on a defense that statistically was the best we've had since we've been here. Um, you know, we got some key pieces to fill. Obviously, there's not a 6'3", 200-pound All-Stater back there, but, uh, you know, we, we've been able to reload. And our mindset last year was just, you know, attack on defense and try to keep people from scoring, so that's our mindset this year. Uh, I don't really feel like it's going to change too much of what we are. We know how to hit, we know how to tackle, and uh, I think we're going to succeed doing that.